So one of my most anticipated games of 2024 was a game that was coming out very early in 2024. I, of course, am talking about Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Now, I'm not the biggest Prince of Persia fan in the world, but I definitely felt like this was a franchise that was just kind of lost to the sands of time, no pun intended. It had been quite a while since we saw a Prince of Persia game. So when this game was announced and unveiled as like a 2.5D side-scrolling Metroidvania style game, I was like, okay, this looks freaking awesome. I was super stoked to play this game, and considering it's one of the early games in the year of 2024, I felt like this would be kind of a good indicator of how we're going to handle 2024 as far as new games are concerned. Now, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is coming out on all platforms, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and X, Windows, but I, of course, wanted to check out the Switch version of the game. Give me the weakest hardware because I want to see how this game performs. Was this, you know, just a shoddy port of a game that's going to release on other platforms? Or was there time, love, and care put into this? Because let's be real, if this game has a good chance of succeeding, it's probably going to be on the Nintendo Switch with that Metroidvania style. I ended up getting a review copy of this game, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But let's talk about Prince of Persia the Lost Crown because honestly this game really surprised me so storyline wise you play as a character named Sargon who is a member of a clan called the Immortals basically you have to rescue a prince by the name of Hassan who gets kidnapped he gets taken to the cursed city of Mount Koth and that's pretty much where you play the game there's like a little in, uh, introduction thing where you kind of get used to the combat then you head off to Mount Koth after Prince Hassan gets kidnapped by someone that might be kind of close to you and then the story kind of goes in different directions once you get to Mount Koth. You start to learn about other things that are happening, you get other characters introduced, maybe even some betrayal from somebody else that you didn't expect to betray you. It's fine, you know, I think it's it's good enough to keep you somewhat interested. There's a lot of twists and turns that end up happening. You know, people start pointing fingers at you about stuff. You know, it's pretty cool, I, I liked it. It's definitely a vehicle to get to the point of the game. And the point of the game is the gameplay. So if you know anything about Prince of Persia as a franchise, it originally started out as like a 2D platforming game. It had like a time limit. You know, the, the, the jumping was a little bit wonky and stuff like that. But that's what the roots of Prince of Persia were. Then we got these other games that came out, you know, during the GameCube era. And we ended up getting these 3D adventures that were super, super fun games. But I felt like they maybe just released too many in kind of a short period of time because there was like three games that came out during that generation of Prince of Persia, but they all had sort of unique elements to them. And one of the elements was uh, the ability to sort of manipulate time in this game. And that's what this game definitely feels like. It feels like a blending of the old school Prince of Persia with sort of modern mechanics that you saw in some of the 3D versions of the Prince of Persia games because it really is like a Metroidvania through and through. You start off and you're in this big Mount Cough and you're like, okay, where do I go? What do I do? So you start exploring. You start realizing that there's places that you can't quite access at the initial time. So you have to level up Sargon and get new abilities and get new amulets. There's lots of amulets in the game. You come across these trees where you can save the game and swap out your amulets. The amulets basically allow you to choose what you kind of want to prioritize. Do you want to prioritize combat? Do you want to prioritize your health? Stuff like that. You can mix and match them. You can unlock additional amulet slots as well. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, you have the combat of the game. And I will say the combat of the game is extremely, extremely satisfying. And there's lots of variables that end up happening as well. So Sargon, of course, has two blades. He wields dual blades. So you're doing a lot of melee attacks and stuff like that. And at first, you're kind of like, oh, okay, kind of a bit of a button masher and stuff like that. But as you play around with things, you end up realizing that there's a lot more to it. There's like sweep attacks and high attacks, air juggles, all sorts of stuff that you can do like a little training session with this guy and he'll tell you how to do all these moves. It's actually really freaking cool how much stuff there is. Of course, you can dodge attacks. Some attacks actually can't be blocked or parried and you'll have to dodge them. Those are done by red attacks. And then there's yellow attacks that 
that allow you to do a parry in which you'll do like a one hit kill or like a super damage if it's like a boss battle or something like that to the bosses. So like it's it's super awesome, man. Like it, it's super satisfying. And like some of these kills that you get based off the perfect timed yellow parry are so cool to see. So it kind of makes you want to like figure out, you know, master the parry essentially. Usually in games, I'm a bit of a dodger. That's probably why I'm not good at the Souls games, because I don't like parrying. I like to dodge stuff. But in this game, the parrying was just so rewarding. It was like, I want to focus on the parrying. You also get something called Athra's Glow, which is essentially like your special meter. And you get these special attacks that you can do at certain intervals when you build up this meter. You build up the meter by basically fighting enemies and, you know, slashing them up and stuff like that. And they give you essentially your super attacks. You end up getting a bunch of different super attacks that you unlock as you play throughout the game. So you can mix and match what you want to have. You can have two at the same time. One of them requires one full bar. One of them requires two full bars. But it's nice, you know, it keeps things fresh because you could swap out different attacks based on what you kind of want to focus on. There's one where you can sort of heal yourself. There's one where it's like a super arrow and it goes through people. It's pretty cool stuff. There's also arrow combat. You end up getting a bow and you could shoot enemies with that. There's like this weird boomerang thing you get as well that allows you to hit switches or hit enemies from a distance. The game is always introducing new elements like a Metroidvania should. And I think the pacing of it is, is very, very well done. Like, the gameplay is super, super satisfying. The platforming, it, it might be some of the best platforming I've felt in a game like this. Like, it is so precise because you have to do some crazy crap in this game. You have to do some crazy platforming, like a, a jump off a wall and then dash and then grab something and then flip off that and avoid a projectile. Like there is some crazy platforming that happens in this game, but it all boils down to you and your skill and how you approach the situation because the controls are, are completely flawless. Like you'll get some moments where it finally clicks, like what you have to do in an area to platform like there, there, there were specifically moments where I'm like, am I supposed to be here? Am I not supposed to be here? I feel like this is the way I'm, I'm supposed to go. And then you finally figure it out via platforming or something else like that. And it's it's so it is so satisfying. The boss battles are super fun. They all have their own little tells and stuff like that. But they're all these big creatures. They happen, you know, it's like sub bosses that end up coming up as well. So it keeps things, you know, keeps things, keeps you on your toes, essentially, is what I want to say with this. And it, you know, there's puzzles to solve. There's your main quest. There's your side quest. This game is huge, people. This game is huge. The main game itself is like over 20 hours and that's not taking into account doing side quests and stuff like that like the map of of car where you are is, is awesomely huge but there are ways to traverse it you know quickly you come across different portals that you can take to different areas there is a sort of elevator shaft system that runs in the middle of it if you want to get somewhere quickly and you're not near a portal or something like that so it's not hard to you know get around but the game is pretty challenging in terms of of the platforming you know the combat i feel like you could get down pretty easily but the platforming is, is surprisingly challenging but very very satisfying there's a guided mode that you can use in the game that's supposedly getting a day one patch to be a bit more precise and kind of show you how to get somewhere because as it stands right now you can actually switch it on the fly as it stands right now when you bring up the map like it just shows you where you need to go, but it doesn't really tell you where you need to go. So it, it's not really like super helpful, but according to Ubisoft, they are doing a day one patch to address that and a few other things. But I, I absolutely love the gameplay of this game. I've been having so much fun playing it, trying to find all the secrets, you know, trying to build up my currency. There's shops in the game where you can get upgrades. There's a blacksmith that will upgrade your stuff as well. There's different types of currency because something happens in the game and you go somewhere else that needs a different type of currency everything just flows together brilliantly presentation wise 
pretty damn solid on the Nintendo Switch. All the footage that you're looking at right now is from the earlier parts of the game, or maybe I went back to an earlier part of the game. I don't want to spoil too much for you guys, but the game runs really well, honestly. Um, 60 frames pretty much throughout, couple little dips here and there, nothing too crazy, but pretty solid throughout the adventure. I, of course, played this game mostly in handheld mode, so I was having a fun time with it. Looks great on the OLED screen, definitely pops really well. That 60 frames it just looks so silky smooth on there. The colors all look nice. The graphics aren't the most you know, intensive in a game or anything like that, but you know, they're, they're serviceable. All the areas, you end up visiting a whole bunch of different areas. They all look unique to each other. You know, there's lots of stuff that happens in the foregrounds and the backgrounds. Characters are jumping in and out and stuff like that. It, it's a really smooth presentation. The music is well done. The um, voice acting is pretty well done. And then we get to the part where I'm supposed to have complaints. And I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I really don't know what to complain about. Like, th this is one of the best Metroidvania games that I have played in a very, very long time. This is a $50 game, okay? This is a $50 game. And the amount of content in this game and the high quality that it is, like, if you're a Metroidvania fan, this is a must-play, in my opinion. Like, I, I, I'm struggling. I am genuinely struggling to find like real complaints about this game if you're not a fan of metroidvania games this game will not do anything this new game will 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 be the bane of your existence because it's a metroidvania game through and through i got lost a ton i doubted myself i was like well i don't know where the hell to go next but then when you figure it out you get that aha moment it's like oh Yes, this is so much fun. This is so good. The combat, extremely satisfying. You're always unlocking stuff in the game, and everything just flows so well. So I, I really don't have many complaints about this game. Like I, I might actually pick this game up physically just to kind of have it with my Switch games because I like it that much. And, you know, I, I understand that Ubisoft games, you know, they kind of have a stigma about them. But I don't think this game... You know, I think this game is like the most un-Ubisoft game that I've played in a very, very long time in terms of that sort of stigma that these games have. I will say one thing, though. I think this game was originally going to be a spinoff of Immortals Phoenix Rising because these people say the word Immortals so much. The name of your group that goes to save uh, Hassan is called the Immortals. Like, come on, don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Immortals Phoenix Rising didn't do all that well, so you shifted it to a Prince of Persia game. But I'm glad you did, Ubisoft. This game, this game kicks ass, man. Check it out. Pick it up. If you're a Metroidvania fan or, you know, just interested in Metroidvanias, this is a top-of-the-notch game, top-of-the-line experience, and I really don't have any major complaints about it whatsoever. Let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Are you surprised I like this game as much as I did? Because, honestly, I am very surprised I did. I, I thought I would like it, but I ended up loving it. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.